Greetings to all! In this video, I'll show how to take center of mass into consideration when creating physically accurate animation. The center of mass projection helps to understand if the character is in balance. This is important when you set up the poses. But the position of the center of mass can be taken into account in animation as well. Let's try to make a simple animation by using the center of mass as a reference. It will be an animation of a character rising from the chair. We can use a simple model for this animation. But we can actually make it even simpler than this. For this animation, I would advise to ignore the character's arms, so we won't have to pay attention to them and could focus on the back's movement. But in this case, I can't just hide the arms from view. Look, even if I hide the arms, they are still influenced by the body. When I move the character's torso, the arms too change their positions. And this is not what I want, because they would affect the center of mass as well. Previously, we've discussed what IK and FK mean in interpolation and used motions of an arm from the shoulder down as an example. But both inverse and forward kinematics can just as well be used in the rig settings while setting up the pose. By default, all the rig controllers are in the IK mode, but I can select the controllers in the arm, open the Point Local Controller tab and turn on the FK on frame option. Now the arm will follow the body as a single object, even when I don't select its points. Now the arms will also follow the body in one position. This means they won't be affecting the position of the center of mass, and later I could easily fix them and add them to the animation. So now I can easily hide joints and points in the arms. For this I'll need to select them and then press V. As this will be a rising from the chair animation, we'll also need something for the character to sit on. We can take a simple cube, open the objects menu, the add section, cube. A cube object will appear in the viewport, but this is not the same cube as the one found in the sample sense. This cube is only a mesh, it doesn't even have joints, but for our case it will be enough. Note that to select this cube we'll have to switch to the mesh mode, thus in the regular mode the cube won't get in our way when we select other objects. Select the scale tool and make the cube smaller. It should be about as high as a character's leg up to the knee. Now we'll need to move the cube to the ground. Move the character's feet a little. Before we make the character sit on the cube, let's create a key and frame 40. This key will be for the final pose where the character has risen from the chair. And in frame 0 we can now change this pose and place the character on the chair. For this, we can select the entire body and move it. Finally, we have two keyframes. If we just set interpolation between them, we'll get this kind of rising up. But not only does this motion look too mechanical and not very good, this is also not correct from the physical point of view. Look at the center of mass projection. When the character is sitting, the projection is under the fulcrum points and everything is fine. But when the character rises up, we have a long sequence of frames where the projection is not under the fulcrum points. Like in this frame, the character would not have been able to keep balance. Just like in this frame and in this one too, it wouldn't be physically possible to get to the final pose with initial conditions like this. Not unless the character is supported by wires or some supernatural forces. With more dynamic motions, the center of mass can temporarily move beyond fulcrum points, and in such cases, characters won't fall as they continue to move inertially. But rising from a chair is not one of these cases. Look what happens in real life. First, the man leans forward, then pushes himself forward and only then straightens himself up to get into the final pose. To lean forward is required for moving the center of mass projection closer to the fulcrum points. Then we'll need at least one more key. So I remove Bezier 
and set back step. Let's assume the new key will be at frame 10. I select the upper body and tilt the character forward. As we can see, the projection of the center of mass moves closer to the feet. I can still see hands points in the viewport if they are selected. Right click on the view mode icon and disable the always show selected objects option. Now, when I select points by double clicking or using a hotkey, the hand points are not displayed. At frame 15, we can add another key and move the body even farther forward. The character has moved closer to the edge of the chair. In reality, he could additionally post himself with his arms or with his legs. It doesn't really matter at the moment. At this point, we can already start raising a little. Now, let's set up interpolation and look at our animation. This is already looking more natural. Now, let's see the trajectory for the center of mass. This is one of the most important trajectories for creating physically accurate animations. The smoother it is, the better the animation will look as a whole. Let's fixate the visualization for the trajectory and the interval. So, now we can see the trajectory of the center of mass makes a small arc. Also, on these frames, the character probably leans forward a bit too much. He doesn't look balanced, and the projection of the center of mass is close to the toys. It'd be better to straighten the character a bit. So, I create a new key and move the character's body backward. The animation we've ended up with is rather sketchy. It can still be improved or altered, depending on an artistic task you have. It can be made more cartoonish and exaggerated, or, on the contrary, more realistic. But the foundation for the motion will always be more or less the same. For example, let us add a preparation pose. Poses like this often improve the animation's visual impact and make the motion look more lifelike. Real-life motions also have preparation poses. In a preparation pose, the character acts in a direction opposite to the direction of the main action. In this case, before leaning forward, the character could first lean backward a bit. This way, the character sort of allows himself to gain more inertia before the main action. Let's see if the trajectory is even. I would like the character to accelerate closer to the moment of rising up, and then to decelerate only at the end of the motion. First, I can adjust the position of the character's body. Second, I can change the timings. Now, trajectory has been smoothed out. Now the animation looks better. Another detail that could help to liven up the animation, the character could move the feet closer before rising up. This looks natural and, once again, helps to move the projection of the center of mass to the fulcrum points. I've moved the leg on this frame, but I don't want it to slide back later. I need this leg to retain its current position on all subsequent frames. For this, I can select the leg, press Ctrl plus C to copy the point's positions on this frame, select the interval, and press Alt plus Ctrl plus V. The Alt key in the combination means that the same position will be copied onto every selected frame. Only this time I forgot to disable the interval fixing button, so the leg's positions have been copied to every frame, including interpolation frames. And I don't currently need this. I want interpolation to be automatically recalculated when I change something on a keyframe, so I'll just set it back to Bezier. And disable the button, just in case. Finally, we can add the arms to the animation. Press Alt plus V to make all hidden objects visible. Also, before editing the arms positions, we should probably switch them back to the IK mode. Now, 
we can go over the keyframes and add motions to the arms. This is why observing trajectories and projections of the center of mass is crucial by creating animation. Of course, you can try to just copy a reference. But what would you do if your character's proportion differ? Or if you'll need to somehow alter the motion? For cases like this, it is monitoring the center of mass that can help.